Today on Wilderness Conversations, we're joined by the Riverwood Senior Sunday School class, Austin, Tyler, Noah and Mia. And they speak to us about life before and after COVID and some of their hopes for the future. Welcome to Wilderness Conversations. I have with me the Riverwood Ecclesia Senior Sunday School class. We've got Mia, Austin, Tyler and Noah. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. COVID-19, we're right in the middle of one of the biggest things that has happened in the last 100 years, but you don't really know that because you've only been alive just for a handful of years. But what's it been like for you? What about you, Mia? How's it affected you? With school, it's been the worst. Really? Yes, it's been awful because homeschooling in Year 12 is hard. And then um, socially, um, there's a lot of technology that helped, but still face-to-face has been so much better now that restrictions are off. Mm. Well, well, let's focus on school for a second. Mm-hmm. Has everyone had problems at school? At no, school? I have loved it. You've I'm, loved it. I am in year ten for everyone listening. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I, I I kind of enjoyed school, uh, Zoom school, because it was enjoyed kind of just, not going to school. Yeah, I think that's the the operative term. We were relaxing a little bit. So, but yeah, it was a little bit of cruising, but it was fun, I reckon. Cruising. Mm. All right, I'll have to cut this out so your dad doesn't hear. <laughs> yeah. So when it first happened, what did your school actually do? Did they send you all home and do everything online? Were they ready to go they, with online? Did- they did not want us at school. They were like. Do, they're like, come to school if you want, but don't, please, right. basically. Yeah. What about your school? Kind of no. the seniors were given a bit of a come if you want, but it's up to you really, so mm. a lot of people didn't come. No, you're doing HSC <laughs> or HSC subjects. Yep. Do you reckon it's disadvantaged you? Not really, because everyone in the same cohort has the same problem and everyone's been disadvantaged by the same problem, so... If yeah. you've got a whole bunch, the whole 2020 cohort has all been disadvantaged. So kind of depends on how people take advantage of it. So it kind of doesn't really change much. Yeah. Do you, do you think it suits some people and not others? Yeah. Yes, yes. definitely. But the introverts are going to love it. Yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah. E- extroverts. I'm so it's Although a lot I'm more self, self-directed. I'm an introvert. You're not an introvert. I'm an introvert. <laughs> really? Yeah, I get tired and I get sick okay. of people. <laughs> so I'm an introvert and I hate you it, the only, so that's not true. I'm an introvert. So you got two introverts and two extroverts. No, I, I hated it. I found it a pain. I so it. Oh. people think like... Just the school aspect. I get tired of people, but... I still want to see people. Like yeah. I, I can, I'm fine. I love seeing people, but then after like a long period of time, I need a break. So, so like, what was a typical day for you, Noah, when COVID was at its height? I would wake <laughs> up at about, let's say, probably 8:30. Oh, yeah. my 8:30, goodness. maybe eight <laughs> o'clock, and then I'd run down, grab some breakfast, boot up the move. I moved my desk that was in my room downstairs into the garage so I could okay. kind of get out of my room from because otherwise I'd be there all day after I work at school, get off, then I study after school. But so you've got actually quite a large family. So what were the other kids doing? Because you're because everyone's working from home, right? Yeah. So, so my brothers were. Yeah, one was in the kitchen. One was in the living room. And I was in the garage. Dad was in the um study, and mum was out working because she's at. A uh, school. So. Right. What about you, Austin? Well, my typical day was uh, like no, I'd get up pretty late, about uh, five minutes before class. Maybe um, we had um, a actually we did have some Zoom swimming sessions. Swimming sessions. Yes, uh, some swimming gym sessions. We'd go out in the morning, do a couple of push-ups, and seven o'clock in the morning, get those, get you pumped, ready for the day, have is, a shower. Is this something that you were doing, or did the school ask you to do it? Oh, the school um. The school didn't ask us to do it, but it was like an optional thing. But it was a good way to kind of stay healthy during COVID. And it was kind of fun just seeing the boys in the morning waking up nice and early. And then, um, so then you'd start first two periods, have a nice toasted lunch. Maybe go out and play some table tennis for one up against a wall, which was very, very fun. Did you like it? I loved it. It was so good. It was nice and chill. 
Besides the social aspect. The social aspect was crippling. I was really, really sad. <laughs> crippling. You missed all your friends. I did. But just for, for, it was fun for a while. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I can imagine. Did you that. burn out? So no, how do you know if you burn out? You just have lose no all motivation. motivation. Yeah, you oh, just get you really... You won't do anything. You'll try to work. You'll get no work done. Oh, really? So, so what sort of learning. people burned out? What were they doing to burn out? You'll be on the computer all day learning. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. kind of because you're straight at home, you don't get the break of on the bus or the trip home. Basically, move your stuff from the garage upstairs, then hit the study again. Was this discussed amongst the kids or the teachers? No, or not really. No. I, but I, you're you're both aware of the terminology, so it's obviously yeah. being mm. talked it's, about. It's, it yeah. happens a lot in HS. If you're at school in a class, you're kind of forced to sit there and do the work. If you're at home, it's like your own motivation and. We had deadlines. Yeah, we did. Well, we did, but like you could easily just. Teachers would take. I don't, I don't know. I found room. Zoom like at the beginning at least. It was so tiring sitting in front mm, of a TV. Yeah. Like yeah. I found it really weird because I'd sit in front day. of a screen all day, mm -hmm. and I'd just be exhausted. I'm like, what have I been doing? I've done nothing today, and it just be so tiring. So how long did this go on for? Seven so weeks long. for us. Seven for you. Two yeah. to three months. Yeah, it was yeah. a fair while yeah. in there, wasn't month it? Or two. Yeah. It was so like had all, all dad the... working, mum doing uni, Lara doing school, which finished at like ten for her. What did you like the most about it? Uh, not having to wake up at exactly seven o'clock. Yeah, being Jeez. able to sleep in. Basically. Convenience. Yeah. Repaying any it's sleep deck that I carried over for the last three years. Yeah, actually. Right. So it's flexible. Mm, a lot. Actually, this is gonna sound pretty cringy, but me and my siblings actually became really like we ended up becoming close. Because you had no other friends, you had to yeah, put up with. Yeah, I had to. I had to put up with. I I had to put up with them, so we actually became closer. That's a nice thing. Yeah. When you finally went back to school properly, was that? Was that a, a difficult thing to do? No, it was amazing. Amazing? It was mm. the best. Well, seniors only for, our, for us. We had like the first couple of weeks of seniors only. So you had the whole school to yourself? Yes, it, it was bliss. Imagine. It was great. It was what we... What did you like about it? We could play football and everything <laughs> on our own. No, inter no, no distraction. It was definitely a shift. The whole attitude of the school kind of shifted because at least in my school, we're very co-curricular like, focused. It was a big co-curricular focus. And sport... So everything was cancelled. So everything fun you do at school, like mm. drama, or music, just or sport, drama. was all cancelled. And it was kind of like it was like school, but it was just like go in, go out, done. Fun. So yeah, it's school. kind of kind of good to go back to that kind of sense of normality, I guess. So you went back, but it wasn't really the same. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That was hard, but it was just I I enjoyed like being able to talk to my teachers again properly. Yeah. And double checking my work with them work you kind of got a bit more you kind of had to catch up on a lot of work that you did online and then go back and yeah. catch up on the new content so my modern history teacher decided to dye her hair purple <laughs> so you know we spent the first week giving her a little bit of um help for that and a bit of feedback so you're using your time profitably at school <laughs> Now, what subjects are we covering across around the table with the four of you do you reckon have we got a pretty good cross section of subjects I'm seeing engineering on the left of me here with Noah. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing maths and economics. economics. Yeah, because I did the pathways model for the HSC, so that's three subjects in year 11, three subjects in ah. year 12. So what are you doing this year? So I'm doing advanced maths, extension maths, extension one I mean, um, economics and PDHPE. Then next so it's year's. actually quite a variety because you've got yeah. your, your, P, your PE and your maths. Yeah. And you're doing yeah. extension maths, so that's yeah. pretty impressive. It's it's fun if you can keep up, <laughs> which it's a bit hectic with all the COVID stuff. So what are you doing next year? Advanced English, Extension English, Chemistry, and I think what's the other subject? Business studies, mate. Business studies. Business that's studies. the other subject. Yeah. So you like your extension? Yes. Uh, more to learn, not not for the ATAR. Essentially, I just want to get some. That's good. Do you, do you know what you want to do after HSC? Um, I'm looking at going down the economics, law, business, entrepreneur, okay. kind of... Well, you'll need your maths for that, that's for sure. Yeah, maths and potentially robotics. Just mm -hmm. depends on okay. how Elon Musk changes the world. <laughs> <laughs> the world's changing so quickly. And what about you, Mia? What are you doing? Um, I do ancient history, biology, maths, English, and DT. What's DT? DT is design and technology. What do you do for that? That sounds interesting. So it's, you, it, you just learn the design process and you, it's all about um, making mistakes and trying to fix them. And do you have to make things. stuff? Yeah, we do. What we have, have you to, made? Um, 
I'm making a jewelry box for travelling. That's my major project. For travelling. For travelling. This won't be able to be tested at all because no one's. No, traveling. exactly. So, but that's that's <laughs> but that's good because it. The whole point of your portfolio is all about the problems. Like they want you to have problems so that you can fix them. Okay. So it's actually gonna actually help. After HSC. Um. After HSC, I want to do nursing and then eventually midwifery. Right, because you can go straight into midwifery. Yeah, I think. but I want to do nursing because it gives me a um, broader, it, like in case I want to change my mind yeah. and things like that. So nursing's great because you can go overseas. Nurses are, mm. can work anywhere. Yeah, and there's a big. The only um, problem is you can't travel. And there's a big yeah. push no, for nurses uh, yeah, as well. Yeah, everyone moment. wants nurses at the moment. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Austin? What are you studying? So I think I'm more the uh, humanities guy. Uh, so at the moment, I'm doing... You know that's the, the cop-out, the humanities. Oh, the no, 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 yeah, it takes, no. It takes no. great essay structure. Do you agree with me? Steel no. paragraphs. Hang on, let's ask Noah. Do you reckon the humanities are easier or the sciences? Humanities is definitely easier. It's not about, it's not about it being easy. It's about no, how the way you can. construct an argument and how you present evidence. So at the moment, I'm doing extension one English. Um, modern history, economics, legal studies, um, maths English. and bio. And advanced. How's your maths? Advanced that maths. seems like about eight subjects. He brought about his maths. Uh, about his maths. Yeah, I'm picking up extension, extension history next year as well. What about your maths though? Oh, my maths, you, you know, there's, there's room for improvement, Tyler. <laughs> Always room for improvement. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I really enjoy the humanities. It's kind of it's kind of good that you get to apply your essay writing knowledge across all your subjects pretty much. So it's... Mm. One thing you learn in modern history, for So example. you're doing year 11, yep. and then in year 12 next year, you'll have to choose five or six subjects? I'm going to drop biology, so I can specialise in my, um, in my uh, humanities, <laughs> so, and pick up extension history. History would be interesting. What are you studying in history? So this year, uh, we've done the Cuban Revolution, um, the Russian Revolution, and the World War One. So that's yeah. been really interesting. So it's kind of been analysing how the um, economic, social and political impacts that had, especially um, in the nations surrounding it, and the impact of people really in overthrowing governments and along those lines. It's good, good to know because it sets the background to where we find ourselves today. Yeah. Well, if you do it again next year, what would you do in HSC? What, do, they, do you get a choice? Yeah, um, we don't get a choice, but I know what we're doing. We're going to be doing the rise of Nazism. Uh, we're also going to be doing, I think... Communist China. For history extension, I think we do get a choice. We get to analyse certain historians. So I was thinking of doing Josephus next year. Oh, that would be really interesting. Pretty, a pretty well known um, biblical historian and how that his writing backed up the Bible. And I was thinking of doing that for my major work, as it were, for our modern uh, for history extension. That would be fantastic to do that. Yeah, yeah, it was. Tyler, you're in year ten. What subjects are you doing? So I do maths, English, just the not even. I do advanced maths. There's no difference. English is just normal. PDH, geography, history, science. And then my two electives, I do IST and commerce. IST. Yeah, What's information, that? software, and technology. So okay. Like computers. Yeah. Okay. And the other one was? Commerce. Commerce. Okay. And next year, you've got to make your choices for yeah, HSC. I, I already made my choice. What are you doing? Just advanced English, chemistry, and business studies. So I'll have 25 hours of normal. What are your aspirations for a career, okay. Matt, Tyler? Well, I would actually like to go somewhere into business, but I'm not sure yet. Entrepreneurship. Is he a bit of an entrepreneur? No. I think Wait, Noah's more the entrepreneur. Yeah, Noah He's is pressuring us to get into a pyramid scheme. Really? <laughs> <laughs> not and even a pyramid scheme. Share, shipping. share that with us. Um, it's it's a process of where you set yourself up as a middleman between the fact uh, the production facility in China or India, and you essentially build a consumer base in probably the wealthier countries and more advanced economies, so the States, Canada, uh, Australia, the UK, and Europe and everything, and you sell products to them because you act as essentially doesn't, it's a like salesman. like Alibaba or one of those? Yeah, you it? kind of buy a whole bunch of bulk stuff off really them. cheap. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of sell it out. You do the advertising and everything at the um, production facilities. So you'd have, to, you'd have to choose some products or a product line. Yeah. What have you got in mind? Um, I'm thinking of doing the wireless charger, so because the yeah. new iPhones coming out doesn't have a charger, so I was thinking of doing that. You can buy them on Alibaba for around or under five bucks per unit, depending on how many you buy, and then on Amazon you can sell them for twenty dollars. eBay's twenty five to thirty. Gumtree, it's around the same, and a lot of people are showing interest. You so could, but you could be rich by the time you finish school. 
Yeah, that was my plan, but school's getting a bit hectic, so I can't really mm. fit that in at the same time. Have so you, have you got to some... drag Tyler into it. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler's got plenty of time, apparently. He, yeah. he came to me with the, no, I have a solution, I have an idea. How about we set up a business? Now, one of the subjects that I know is dear to all of your hearts is relationships. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let Austin give him some time. He needs he needs his time. Oh, deep I think I think the important you need to give me a lot. I think time. the important thing this. is you need to you need to focus on what's really important. I reckon. Shut up! Shut up! Yeah, you need to this. focus on uh, like on the meeting. You need to focus at school. Yep. And you know I feel like if you do that, everything kind of falls into line. Austin, I sense hearing your mother speaking when you say that. Yes. Would that be fair? Would that be a fair? Well, it is fair. It's just that I think I I think you, it's her words that have just really impacted me and I think it's really come on and I've finally started to grasp that message. I can see an enormous amount of respect for your mother, which is a good thing, by yeah. the way. You've got a very wise mother. What oh. about your father? Something similar, I'd imagine. Oh, my father, yeah. He's, um, he's, he's, got, he's got his rules about relationships. At school these days, what's it like being a Christian? Is it rare to be a Christian? Is it common? And do you talk about it much? I think that me and Austin have very opposite... Um, things at school because... Opposite experiences. Uh, yeah, because um, my school is so many, like 90% of people are religious, whether it's a type of Christian or it's like Muslim or something. So we often have discussions within my friend group and there's many different opinions and people bring all sorts of things. So it's actually it. common to discuss. It's very common, mm. very common, all the time. And... Um, Christian to Muslim or usually into... Um, often Christian to Christian. There right. is a lot of um, Muslims, like two of my friends are Muslim, but 90% are mm -hmm. like Catholic or some sort of Christian. And how do you find that? Um, I find it very interesting to learn what they believe. And um, I don't know, I find it... <laughs> how, how would you compare your knowledge of the Bible? And they your... actually have very limited knowledge. They They just go off what they are told and whether it's by like priests or their parents they don't really study the bible for themselves and they don't really all they know is heaven and hell that's about it they just don't want to go to hell that, that's what they talk about they don't really talk about um god's character or i don't know why why things are like why heaven or hell i don't know they don't really question anything mm. Yeah. If they don't know much, what, why do they keep going to the church? They love um, the thought of going to heaven. They love um, feeling, I don't know, the way they describe it, they seem very passionate and things. They love God and things like that, but they don't, I don't know. I think it's just their family that mm. encourages them. Austin, me is saying you've got a, a different sort of experience. Yeah, mine's very different. So we have little to no religious people pretty much at our school it's um very very strongly atheist and it's not even like atheism it's kind of more of an excuse to do whatever you want and kind of live this hedonistic you only live at one's lifestyle and then even at school itself despite being a uni um, united church christian school the message is like pressures is that of like evolution gay marriage that kind of thing and it's really you're pressured into this one narrative and if you don't conform to that narrative you're um often ostracized or you're like not you're not entirely like accepted especially yeah well let's take the example of the gay marriage postal vote was it a topic of discussion in your school and in your peer group it was a it was a pretty big discussion but um there was i'd say the majority of them were pretty much I don't care or yes voters. There were a couple of no voters, and but when when questioned about it, I was questioned by a few teachers, um, especially on the pushing of some students because they knew that I was Christian. I pretty much responded that it isn't our place uh, as Christadelphians. We don't have a place to vote in this world. We're not citizens of this world. So you can go off, um, you can go ahead and do whatever you want. But it says in the Bible's very clear: if you want to follow God and if you want to go and head head and do these things, they're not compatible. And um, yeah, so that's what I that's what my kind of defense was. But there was a lot of discussion about it, and there has been other discussion on topics like the Israel Palestine conflict, especially in um in um, history last year, and also but uh, even biology this year. There's a lot of pressure 
on um, the kind of the evolutionary Charles Darwinist kind of ideals and even like the idea of Adam and Eve is ridiculed and mocked. Do you get an opportunity to put alternate views forward or they or, or the narratives is pretty well set and you sort of just kind of go along with it just to, to the best of your ability? It's dependent on the subject, to be honest. So if mm. it's in biology, for example, I don't really... I know that, that it's a heavily, heavily atheist class and it's. I know that my views will be shot down with any with a lack of consideration. So which is why I don't really go out and contest it and because mm. it comes up so much. But I always keep the um, ideas in the back of my mind. But say in a more like um, like discussion-based idea like legal studies or humanities, I do voice my opinions a little bit more. And that way just because... That, and people don't find that like... Some people find it unreasonable, but the majority just think, all right, that's your opinion then. So just keep going with that. I have had some really good discussion with some friends just one-on-one -on, -one on the train, for example, without that kind of like group atheist mentality of just yelling down any arguments. But yeah, we've had some good discussions about it and how we as Christelphians actually work and how we differ from other churches. And there is a stigma that especially the um, Catholic Church and the incidences in the news, for example, surrounding the Catholic Church has created. And those kind of stereotypes have not just been harmful for Catholics, but all Christians in general. So You two stigma. guys go to a, it's almost a, a third option because you actually go to a Christadelphian-run mm -hmm. school. That, but that doesn't mean everyone there is religious uh, because no, there's you're... people there that are, are not necessarily Christadelphians and not necessarily even religious. But it must, uh, well, I assume it has a religious um, bent yeah. In what way does it have a religious bent? First of all, we have a whole subject dedicated to Bible. So we have a, well, it's only once a week, but then we have Bible roll call every morning. So so, there's, so that's in addition to your... So we have one hour each week on a, well, I have it on a Monday, some people have it on different days. So the hour you spend per week, what's, that's a like a Bible study type mm. of session. What what do you, what, what's a typical... Well, it's run by Uncle James, Mr. Buchanan himself. Or our is is, we pretty much just because there's a lot of people who don't have who have very limited knowledge about the Bible. It's normally quite quite basic, but you still do sometimes get some good topics. So sometimes he'll give us a piece of paper, we'll write a question down, and he'll answer them like through the class, and he'll bring up quotes to support his ideas. Do you get a chance uh, in your normal school life to have a, a chat to other students about religious ideas, talk about God, the, well, the reality of Religion. Especially, especially in my class, they they don't care. They won't talk to you about it. They don't get involved in it. So there's not too many Christadelphians in your class? Out of the 21 we have, we have five. Right. Okay. So so my class is a bit bigger. There's three so three out of the four guys, Christadelphian, and there's, I think, three or four out of the 12 girls. So because mine's small. My year 11, my class so is three out of small. Three out of 12 girls... Three out, yeah, three or four out of twelve, and then three or four. Are, are Christadelphians? Yeah. Okay. So it's probably six out of twelve, fourteen, or something like yeah. that. Okay. So. I think kind of on there, like the idea of like the um, like the Bible, you know, you guys in mm. Bible classes and free speech as well. We have a similar thing, but it's like it's very, very basic. Like we've got chapel, and that goes for about twenty minutes every fortnight, but. The fact is, you get like a five verse Bible reading, and then it's kind of on the overall themes of love and like that kind of thing, which is important, but it's not backed up by any, um, any like biblical evidence. And because it's kind of the uniting church, they don't take a hard or firm stance on anything. So they say, God will love you for whatever you do or have you, however you are, and you should forgive others. And it's kind of more moral lessons attributed to yourself rather than a way of life. And that kind of, and then it's still made as like a chore. For everyone, it's kind of that's how it's presented or that's how people see it. And it's kind of, I don't know, it's not really impactful on their kind of own views, but I don't know. With regard to ecclesial life, and that's changed a lot due to COVID. Had you guys started going to CYC in Sydney? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 So it all just really started. Mm. I'd calls. been going for two, two year, three You've years. You've been going almost? for a few years. Yeah. Two years for me. Yeah. Yep. Two or three. A year. Yeah. For me. Yeah. And then it shut. Mm. Did, Which you, was... did you miss it? Yes. It was so sad. I mean, we had, like, house party and all these, like, FaceTimes and calls, which was all good and stuff, but you couldn't really go out and have proper... I don't know. It was just it just wasn't really the same. No face-to-face -face interaction. Yeah. yeah. And, so, and also, um, no, like, you... No Bible. You had to... Did you get what I mean? Like, yeah. there was no... Um, 
Bible talks that you could keep going to. So it was kind of like you had to really think like you have to motivate yourself by it because you're by yourself. So it's literally only you and God now. It's not like others force like it's not like you're going because that's what you've always done you have to do it because it's it's either that or you don't do it or nothing yeah maybe. yeah i i really really didn't like the like the, the yeah. way that it was kind of closed off and the thing i hated the most was the camps so we oh. were booked in for um adelaide family conference um study first week. study week yeah. and um other and bible schools and stuff and that's all been cancelled and that's kind of that's really upsetting because especially yeah. us as a group have a lot of friends from um, Lismore, from Adelaide, from Newcastle that we barely get to see. And that it, it's those kind of events that we get to see them and we, um, yeah, yeah, we weren't, weren't, weren't able to. But there, there was one advantage was, um, especially with like NCYCs and classes like that, it was a lot easier to go and watch them without like the con- inconvenience of driving up for two hours. So that was, so I did tune into a couple of NCYCs as such. And even the, um, even the Sons of the Prophets was remark, uh, was handled really well. And we still got to get all those talks out and they were very well done and still got to get that knowledge anyway. Yeah, and for CYC as well, it was a bit, a bit hectic because as you're talking about on Zoom, if you were on Zoom all day doing all your online classes and stuff, you would have school would finish at three or four o'clock and then you'd come back you would come home eat dinner do maybe a bit of work clean the house or whatever then you basically set up for another zoom lesson that didn't always stick to the hour time frame maybe went an hour and a half two hours and it got really draining so yeah i can imagine that so you've been on yeah. zoom all day at school you're basically on a screen all day and then your 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 um cyc activity is also on zoom i do think it's a um really good idea that even though things are starting to go kind of back to normal, even though there are still restrictions, that Zooming is still yeah. an option because, oh, like yeah. like you said, like we can watch um, NCYCs, which usually we'd have to drive hours, mm. and now it's easier to do that. And same with um, the meetings. Like it's really great that we can – I really miss not being able to come back here. Um, but for people who actually still can't get back here, um, Zooming and YouTube is a really good idea. Well, Did any of you guys not? tune into like an Adelaide CYC or a, I, or a Brisbane? Yeah, I... I, I tuned into an Adelaide um, meeting and yeah. I was choosing... Although we were away, I probably listened to more Bible talks in like yeah, when I was at home yeah. than I ever have in my life. Yeah. And also, I, there was so many baptisms. Yeah, I tuned yeah. in so many baptisms. There was so many baptisms. Yeah, so that was actually... That was, I was just about to say that because um, in my baptism, there was like so many people that could watch that wouldn't have been able to come, come down yeah. to see otherwise even though it was sad that I couldn't see them but I've seen so many of my friends baptisms that I wouldn't have been gone wouldn't have been able to see if like it today, wasn't for yeah, technology even, even today we um watched um Juliet Norton's baptism from Lismore uh, out there mm-hmm. just on zoom and we so you did that as part of your, the end of your Sunday school class yeah, yeah pretty much so, so how did that work out it worked oh, out fine. Just very well. Good. Click it on, you watch it. Yeah, yeah. and they did their hymns. And, and you did it as a group. You sat yeah, down yeah, and watched it. Yeah, we sat down and watched it. And then the younger class came in and watched as well. And it yeah. Was, yeah, it was really nice. Well, there's some advantages then. Mm. And maybe there's some of these things which will stay. I feel, like it's, I feel like it's an advantage when you've got the option of coming as well. Yeah. yeah. Because it's right. not, and it, it feels awful when it's your only option. Um, yeah, because it was very lonely. Yeah. You would just sit there every week you know, just by yourself or with your family, just watching all your friends on the screen. Even with that, once you got the 10 people, the single family is allowed to come over, 20 people limit mm. are allowed to come over. That's when it kind of you got a bit less isolated. Yeah, it yeah. got better. You could go over. I think mm. a couple of our families got together to watch one of them with yeah. the one or two family limit rule. And even mm. for, like, RYC, we had the um, the boys had... Um, RYC. Oh, I see. So that's our own Riverwood Young, young River. People. Yeah, Riverwood Young pink. People. But um, so we we had the boys go to the Gillums and then we had um, the girls go to ours. And it was that kind of like, we still got to zoom in and see each other. So we would just have a, yeah. Yeah, all two the boys, separate groups. Yeah, zooming yeah. into the girls. And you still got to hang out afterwards and have supper together. And yeah, so mm. that worked really well as well. And mm. kind of bringing everyone back together. Are you worried about getting COVID? 
No. 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 Although, like, I do know that everyone's talking about our age group is the group that most is spreads it. So I think it's just um, you have to be careful. So you're not worried about getting sick yourself? No, but I I am worried about family members. Yeah, same. So you're worried about getting it and then passing it on? Yeah, Yeah, or just family members in general getting it from anyone. You mentioned the Riverwood, you called it the RYC, Riverwood Mm -hmm. Young People. That's a Romans class. You've been doing that for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how are you finding that, Tyler? Uh, Very good. We are very uh, doing Romans in great amount of detail. detail. It's Mm -hmm. very in-depth. What are you up to? Romans 8. Or 9. No, we're still on 8. No, we're still on 8. No, we're still on 8. So you're taking quite some time over each yeah, chapter. We're yeah, much, we're literally like we're getting stuck in our head. Yeah. Pretty much. And this is every second Friday night? Mm. Oh, every like, like once, once a month. Also month. because the ages are quite varied, so we have to make sure that everyone can understand it. Yeah. And, also and it's had... some people's first year of learning Romans yeah. So yeah, ever. we kind of have to yeah. do a couple of revisions. Has anything from the study of Romans surprised you or particularly stuck in your head? Um, Square is not a circle. Yeah, yeah. square I is just, not a circle. It, basically, the argument of perspective. And so basically... People, when they read the Bible, they go, well, that's okay because I think it's okay from my perspective. But Being it depends right on whose perspective it's from is who's right, mm. who is in the right. And the only so what's perspective the, that what, matters is God's. So as, I was just going to ask, so what what did you learn? What's what's the answer to the question about perspective? Yeah, so as God's perspective is kind of the one that the Bible's based yeah. off, so that's who it really yeah, and matters. Then, it's like in the legal system. It's not... As always the judge's perspective that matters. It's the 12 other people that form the jury's perspective that who's innocent, who's guilty, what are the damages paid and yeah. all that. And then it's we learn about how the Jews, they thought they were the, I don't know, bee's knees because they, the they were God's people, so they thought they were also, their perspective mattered as well over the Gentiles, say. So, um, and then we learned about their method of, like, t- um box ticking and yeah. rather than like learn, um, learning about the going in depth and why they're doing things. Um, and also, we so learn does, about that have, does that have an application today? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. 100%. It's kind of very focused on the applications for today. Yeah, that's what we're actually really focusing on as well. So what does it mean for us today? Um, that we have to, we can't just focus on little, like certain bits of the Bible. We have to look at the whole um, Bible and what they what God wants us to do. So his whole plan is not based, we, we don't get into the kingdom by tick, bo- ticking boxes. We get into the kingdom by doing, well, trying to do what he wants, but also, I don't know, like, what else do you get? In an like, age, yeah, I think the, like, what Noel was saying about the, um, perspective. Mm. I think that the idea of humanism today and that kind of area has been something we've been discussing a lot and how today you can choose whatever you want to be and like Mm. you don't have to look down like it's all up to you and I think that kind of humanist thinking is what's getting us away from God because we have a set plan and we have a plan that Mm. God's rolling out and we have a we have a part to play and that kind of way we're trying to detach ourselves from God and make ourselves our own God as if. Mm. And I think that's kind of the practical application is the idea that we shouldn't give in to this humanist thinking that's perpetrated by the media and the organisations in power today. We should be getting back, head in our Bibles and focusing on what's right. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's with like the square is not a circle thing. That was like the very first lesson we did We at the start when we started. It was when the... Uh, marriage equality plebiscite came out and we were talking about that and the results of what happened there and it was kind of basically really told you how to get your thinking around it and what it was Mm. and in romans 8 which is what we just learned it was this is what we're talking about now is the spiritual thinking and the fleshly thinking of you know the jews um thinking like with their own minds whereas we should try to aim to have um, our minds like God's, which is spiritual thinking. And that's also, it he- the studying Romans also helped me understand, like, at school, all my school friends, um, what they believe and how other religions came about because spiritual thinking in um, the in Romans 8 is, like, with a capital S. So it's like kind of like a person. So that's why um, they've started to think that, you know, they're given the Holy Spirit and that's what helps them. 
Whereas, like, so now I kind of, before I was like, where are you guys getting this from? Like, I don't understand. And now I've under, I have understand and I know how to talk to them about it in an easier way with um, understanding where they're coming from too. How about you, Tyler? You've, you've been going to the class for a couple of years now. What have you learned? Well, we have really expanded on, like, God's characteristics and his righteousness and how he is, well, his perspective is the only correct perspective we should be trying to follow his ways not man's ways um the things of this earth will disappear so we shouldn't be like materialistic in our ways and we should be like focusing on focusing on the things that will be everlasting like the bible our prayer and also the importance of like daily readings and regularly like yeah. feeding on his work like an analogy we used was you don't eat on sunday and eat as much as you can and then not eat for the rest of the week you eat a bit every day, which is what we should be doing on like the mm. Bible. You shouldn't just get all our food for the week from the uh, Sunday and just wait till next Sunday. Yeah, so it was like how it's like it's all good saying, oh, we should have God's, um, we should aim to have God's mind, but we also focusing on how we can do that. So yeah, it's like human plasticity. You're mm. a hero. You're You're a hero. Plasticity. Come on. Stop ready, people. Me up. <laughs> cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> So she I'll said something else on that story. I was like, so you said saw. What was the rest of it? What did I say? Human plasticity? Was, yeah. yeah. Oh, that makes no sense. In your studies in Romans, has there been any learning that surprised you that has been different to what you would have expected? You've sort of grown up in the truth, so you, you, you have a sense of you're really just developing your understanding. But, yeah. So you probably don't get a lot of surprises, but... Mm. Anything come to mind? I, I I think this is a surprise, but it was more just something that fascinated me because I I'd, I'd never looked at Romans just sequentially before, and it's kind of amazing how Paul and God just builds on the content of the next chapter, and then it all like forms together like a rich tapestry, and how it all connects, and it's just interesting because I like you do a selective reading of Romans here and a selective reading yeah. of Romans there, but then when you read it sequentially and in depth, you see how all that links together and how it makes one solidified book. Yeah, and in reading in order, it answers all your questions because, like, you read Romans 1 and then you have all these questions and then you mm. read Romans 2 and they're all answered in Romans 2 and then you have questions from Romans 2 and they're all answered in Romans 3. Because Paul is, we keep, like, we sometimes forget that Paul was, like, human as well and he talks about that as well, like, how he keeps failing even though he doesn't want to. So he would have had the same questions as us, so he just answers them all, which is really cool, I guess. He's a very logical thinker, Paul. Yeah, he? very logical. Mm. And all of the applications for today as well, it's got like, life, it's, nothing's really new, Not there's no new scenarios, it was always the issue of what to do in this situation, what to do in that situation, what not, and then you, that's kind of covered so you can kind of really help you. Because you think the world has changed, but when you actually look at it, nothing much has changed. I mean, sure, we might have some flashing new gadgets, but it's still giving into that human lust and that kind of ideals mm -hmm. that was there since Paul's time. And and while there is like direct questions that may not be able to be answered by the Bible, they've already answered the overall themes. And if you just um, if you act within that that how the Bible prescribes it, I think you're on well set to go into the kingdom. I'm looking around the table and quite amazingly, with five of us around the table, every single one of us is the oldest of our family, mm -hmm. which is would be rare. Do you guys like being the oldest? I love it. You love being I the love oldest? Being I love the being the oldest. The oldest. Yeah, yeah, I much. love it. <laughs> what about, we've got three, two loves it, one hates it. Well, let's start with why you like it. I love it because I have, or it's not really, but like I'm sort of, I, I can be... I'm not justified, but I feel like I'm justified being bossy. And I get to do stuff before them, and I get to, I don't know, it's just fun. And it's you like very, being the boss. It's very, yes, I love being the boss, and um, I don't know, I get to, I just feel like I have more power. Power? Yeah. <laughs> do you like being responsible? No. No, no. I love it. Do you feel, do you feel responsible? Do you? Nope. No. You don't feel responsible? Why do you like it, Austin? Well, I like it that there's no, like, expectations. Like, there isn't a pre-built expectation about what you have to be based on your sibling's performance. And you actually get to be that expectation. But you build so the expectation. As long as, as long as you keep within the parameters of you want, what you want to do and what, you do well. What happens if you get one up by your younger sister? But that's the thing. She has that to break the... To shame. She pr has to put the... Um, no, she no. has to break the expectations first. But the good thing is, I mean... After a low expectation like you, Ali's exactly, laughing. exactly, win-win, yeah. win-win.
You don't have any expectations, and <laughs> yeah, Ali's got you exactly, as her expectations. Exactly. What about you, Tyler? You being okay, nervous? so my brother can literally do anything. He could punch me and then cry, and somehow I'll get in trouble. <laughs> like, yeah, that's they're true. just, they're like. Well, that's, that comes with being the oldest. Everything's your fault. I speak from experience. <laughs> I'm, I don't really get in, tr- like, I get, like, annoyed, like, they get annoyed at me, but I don't, I'm You're not. You're actually very good. Well, I'm not good. Yeah, I'm very, I, I'm no, I don't, like, do naughty stuff. I'm probably just, I'm a back chatter. So what's the worst punishment you've had now? No studying. You're I've not been, allowed I've, to study. I've been banned from studying once. How did, like, for, like, tell me about that. Or a That'd week. be so good. No. No? It's not. I, I love studying. I need to, like, love learning and. Getting some. So what did you do to earn that punishment? You prob- probably talking back because I'm, That's very, what you do. I'm very, very quick on the re- replies. <laughs> You're too yeah. quick, probably. Yeah, that probably gets me in trouble a lot of the time. When you've got your job talking back and they stop you from studying. Yeah, that's literally <laughs> what, what I'm happened. I'm going to your house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to your house, man. Like everyone... Talk, talk. It's like kids' worst nightmare to get like sent to their room. Whereas Two maids, my sorry. parents had to st- for stop that punishment in our house because we... Because, well, for me, anyway, because I love my room. My room. Yeah. I love my room. And now they're like, go outside. That's your punishment. But, <laughs> we talk about your punishment? Oh, my punishment, well. Um, I don't know. We've Probably the harshest punishment I've got was kind of like, the punishment was I couldn't have a birthday party and I that I was planning. And, like, I lost their trust for quite a bit. So, you know. Do you think that has it been so restored, much. their trust? I think it has, but I wouldn't want to ask them because I'd probably get offended if they said no. But, no, I haven't done That's... Probably the last time I've seriously gotten in trouble. In a How long ago was time. that? It was a while ago. Yeah, That's kind two? of the like, same with me. Like, I don't really I don't get, get in trouble, trouble anymore. But you lose their trust, yeah. which is worse. Yeah. Does that yeah. worry you? Yes. yes. Losing their trust. Yes, because then they every time you like say something, they like have this doubt on their face, or they like look disappointed, mm. and it's like really. Awful. I hate disappointing <laughs> yeah. my parents. It's really annoying. I yeah. don't like it. But yeah, I think it's nothing since then. So it's yeah, me. we're chilling. Tyler, what I haven't got in trouble for a while actually. Probably like. Two months. <laughs> you've, you've gone a whole two months. Yeah, without, without actually getting in trouble. That's fantastic. I know. Tyler. Yeah, I don't leave my room. <laughs> no, this no, no. Not, it's okay. Let's... This is not a joke. The last time I got severely in trouble was when I ate mum's ice cream without telling her. That ice, that is oh, the last oh, time. Oh, that's so horrible. I know. Mia. That's, Mia. She was Hell. furious with me. This year in Sunday school, you've got James McCann as a teacher. Mm-hmm. What are you studying? Um, The time, like all the, it was all the judges and um the kings all the um, all the way time up to when Jesus was born and like okay. kind of a bit about Jesus but what's then, one of the things you've learned oh. so we were looking at the kind of the minor pro- um the minor prophets That's right. and that was we because that was good because we haven't done a lot of that before like the kind of uh, I know I personally haven't done much like Isaiah or that kind of thing even though um, Ezra Micah those kind of books that we haven't really hit before in Sunday school and it's been good to look at that especially the process of like rebuilding the wall and building the temple and how that's all representative of um, Israel's journey and where, what happens when Christ comes back today yeah. and we really focused on um, like Ezekiel and Daniel like all the prophecies Prophecy yeah, yeah. Um, I also learned like the I was always really confused like I kind of knew the judges and I knew the kings but I never knew the order of like the minor prophets and I never understood um, yeah, because it was a bit confusing with the way the books are set out, but now I understand like the timeline of it, which is really helpful. And with all the current events and stuff that we've been, like Russia and and um, the Middle East issues that have been going on in Turkey and Saudi Arabia and stuff, you basically link that in with Ezekiel. So I think that was when we were online, I'd have my news, screen, news feeds up on one screen and the lesson on another screen and... Yeah, he stuff, would come so out in the middle of the lesson with a new article. news article that had popped 30 <laughs> seconds ago that was... Related. It's amazing how the Middle East is always mm. front of mind, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's always centre of the world politics. Israel's always there in the news. We were doing, when we were at online, online learning, he asked us to do like a homework ta- task and we were given like one creature from like Revelation to do research about. Was it Revelation or Daniel? Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. Daniel that's right. And, um... And like the uh, like the leopard with four heads and wings, the bear that came out of the water. Yeah. So could you choose one? Could you? Oh yeah. no, 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 we didn't have a choice. We to... did all of them. It yeah, all of us did it, and we presented something on them. Okay. So a whole lesson. We just like everyone shared their slides, and then we talked about our. I was assigned Nebuchadnezzar's image, and I had to link it to um, what they were talking about in Daniel. 
Yeah. yeah. Which was actually probably quite hard, even though she thought it was going to be very easy. <laughs> yeah. You thought you had the easy option. Yeah, I had. I thought but I you had actually had to know everything. Yeah, in I, had order to, to I had to link it into there, so I had to go last we both link it in. Well. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It was very interesting. It was actually very helpful. Yeah. I'm glad I did it. You studied mm. the judges. Yeah. Who's got a favourite judge? Um, Austin's going to say Eglon. Eglon. That's no. not a judge. He's not a judge. Ehud is my favorite judge. I reckon he's Ehud. my favorite. Why? I love. I've always loved this. Hey, let's All about right. Ehud. So Ehud, I reckon he was. E- I think. And it sounds. Weird, I think he had the coolest story. He had a secret assassination plot, yeah. and he was his. He was from the. There's so much comparison because I remember. Um, I think we had an activity to do to compare the judges to different parts of the Bible, and I remember. Okay, I'm choosing Ehud, and it's like this. 20 ver- 10 verse section and, and Uncle James like, oh, do you want to do something else with it? Or I'm like, no, I'm going to go into detail just about Ehud. And it was really interesting to draw out those connections about what the significance of him being a Benjamite and how that kind of influenced and what was happening with the um, tribe of Benjamin at the time. And even the story is just, it's very Star Wars-esque as like ch- killing Jabba, Jabba the Hutt, as it were. But um, going, going in and um, liberating... Liberating Israel, I, that's why it's my favourite story. It is, it's one of my favourites too. Yeah. Who else has got a favourite judge? I've I thought someone loved, might say Samson. I've always loved, no, I was just about to say that, I've always loved Samson because I love it how we can see like the extent of God's forgiveness because he kept failing. And I also love seeing how um, even prophets can like, uh, they're human, so they can also fail and still be forgiven. What about a favourite king? Well, most people go straight to David, but mm. you've well, it is hard to go past David. I've got to say, mm. but I love th- there are yeah. other kings. Josiah, yeah. Josiah, yeah. 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 Hezekiah, Hezekiah and Hezekiah. Hezekiah. So yeah. tell us about Josiah. Well, seeing as he was king at what eight was he eight? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he had obviously had to have faith from a very young age, mm-hmm. which is like we kind of had that, but he would have had mm-hmm. less of an influence, like without his parents being there or anyone else. So he would have had to actually like. Instead of just doing it because your parents do it, he would have had to made the choice. And then even after that choice, he was still very committed, very mm-hmm. ready to wasn't serve it, God. Wasn't his father um, not very interested? Was yeah, he wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. He was evil. Yeah, he was very he was evil. Yeah. 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 And also, he had, he would have been king, would have had money. So he could have like followed a different lifestyle, materialistic lifestyle, especially with like the influence of his father mm-hmm. while he was alive, which could have sent him in the completely wrong direction. But... Instead, he just followed God. Mm-hmm. And it ends in such a, a sad way, doesn't it? Yeah. My favourite was about Hezekiah. And a lot like Josiah, was brought up in a very ungodly household. And he was very, yeah. like, pressured to do something. And yet he still kind of came out on top. And he still came out, like, following God. And especially um, last uh, beginning of the year, I went to Israel and went in his tunnels. And that was really impactful because that was a miracle. And he trusted in God to get the, both... The tunnel is to exact hit the exact same spot, which the chance is like one in a million, and it was that kind of. And then he also showed great adversity against all the trouble he went into. Even though it, it seemed like some of the bad kings didn't have that much trouble, but um, a good king like Hezekiah was facing down um, Assyrians and others. And yeah, it was really impactful. Mm. I do um, ancient history at school, and last year we learnt about the Assyrians mm. and King Sennacherib, who was the king at the time of this of Hezekiah. And we learnt, we looked at a source where he was. This is just after they were defeated at the time of Hezekiah because um, of the angels that came and killed them all in, um, in their like tents outside the camp in their camps, and. Straight after that time, we we read sources that Sennacherib was screaming and exclaiming like that like Israel's Lord is the Lord of all like no one um, mess with him basically is what he was saying, which was I found so interesting especially um, learning about it at school. I want to talk just a little bit about our ecclesia or our church. We call it the ecclesia of Riverwood here. It's been closed for quite a few months because of COVID and we're just opening up now. What are your thoughts with regard to coming to meetings and meeting together and so on? I think that it's a great... I think it's the best option to come to the meeting and have fellowship, um, but I understand why people, some people can't and so that's why I think that YouTube and Zoom is a really good idea. But it was very hard in um, isolation when we all had to watch it from home. It just was very... 
lonely, I guess. He's very lonely. Well, so when you're here now, there's a lot less distraction. I feel like we appreciate it way more now. Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like before it was just a thing, a normal thing in our lives. Yeah. Whereas now it's like we realise, like, how important it actually is. And, like, I, I've always come to the meeting my whole life, so it was just normal and easy and now it's like oh the meeting yay i think that being said you need to still take into balance like i think we're very very fortunate with the setup we have now with the great work of um our tech crew and that kind of work um has been really great because even though we can't all meet together and especially even now we're still fa facing risks we shouldn't have to take unnecessary risks with our lives for example to hear the word with god because we've We've got all this amazing work and technology and the YouTube and the Zoom. And I think everyone should be just be grateful for the hard work that was put in for that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And you've only got the a uh, little bit of a problem with all the old people. You kind of don't want to put them at risk. Yeah. Because yeah. we're in frequent content, contact with other, other our schools, what? Public transport. Yeah. You're on public transport. You're at a massive school. You're at an even bigger school. Yeah. So you kind of... If, with a lot of people. Yeah. So, so you're conscious of looking out for others in the yeah, meeting. 100%. Yes. Yeah, hundred percent. Like if anyone's sick, like we have to list. Like that's why there's a uh, even COVID if you've plan. Got like a year seven kid who's sick at your or year eleven kid or whatever mm. in a opposite side of the school that's sick that gets around with all the combinations Very quickly. and yeah. all the mm. stuff. Links what about uh, we talked about youth group activities before? What are you looking forward to? Going uh, back to them, to be honest. I'm yeah. hoping the conferences are on at the end of the conference? year. Conference? Oh, yeah, crossed. I'm hoping. Um, actually, in, I'm pretty sure Sydney Conference has done something very smart and they've moved it to like... August um, next year. August, yeah, August next year. So they've the moved holidays. it, which is very smart. We've got some really nice brethren and sisters in our meeting, which we're very privileged to share with. Who are some of the inspirations for you? Oh, oh. Uncle Warwick. Uncle Warwick oh, inspires uh, you. Uncle was... Remembers everything, but um, probably like Uncle James, he's kind of been around because he's at school and stuff. And then you've got kind of Tommy and Jared, all the young guys you can really kind of connect with as like friends, not only as people who are more of your parents' age, but they're kind of in between and you can like play footy with them or whatever. So, and Brendo and all those kind of guys. Right. Mine, Uncle Greg and Auntie Cheryl. No matter what Zoom call I zoomed into, they were always there, ready to go. They were on CYC as well. Yeah, right? no matter what, they were on it. And well, it's just good to see that there's people who would sit down every day, no matter what time of the day, and watch that. So, yeah. I think my role models stem from all the groups. I think that in the the older members of our community, I think are great for their wisdom. Uncle Jim and Auntie Gwen specifically, their faithfulness has really been an inspiration for me. Um, even in that uh, middle-aged group, as you'd say, Uncle James, uh, Sunday school teacher, he's been amazing in my growth with the Bible and that kind of ideals that really s bringing out the thematic issues and how that's translated throughout the Bible. And in the younger years... Um, especially with Jar Jared and Tom, they really bring out the passion of the Bible and the way that they translate that into like even the activity we had the other night with the um, song and praise was amazing. Even with no singing, it was still amazing to see the young people come around and really put passion into the Bible. Mm, I agree with that because I don't think I can really pinpoint one specific person. I feel like there's so many people who were always um, enthusiastic even um, when people were struggling and always um, like looking out for people who might be lonely um, and also organising things even though we're all at home, like organising Zoom, all the tech crew, like I feel like that was very inspiring and helped us all like, you know, stay on track and keep um, focusing on the Bible even though it was very hard, like even though we couldn't go places, so. And like before this year as well, like I remember when I was like 10 or something, Uncle Jim and Auntie Gwen would like get to the meeting before us and Dad was super and like they would beat us to the meeting every single week and they'd be there waiting like for Sunday school. They didn't even have to be there but they were there for the support and everything. If you had one more thing to say to your uncles and aunties, brethren and sisters in your case, Mia, you haven't spoken about your baptism. 
Mm. It's been a big year for you. Yes, exciting year. Very exciting. Mm. If you had one thing you could say to the brethren and sisters or uncle, uncles and aunties of Riverwood, what would you say? Um, um, thank you for always encouraging me and um, teaching me throughout my whole life um, and motivating me in my life and that's why I got baptised because I knew that even though um, I wasn't seeing everyone, I knew that like um, following Jesus and God's ways were the only way and it's the only, the only thing I need even though I feel like right now school is stressful. I know that in the long run it's not important and um, the kingdom is what I should seek in my life and it's because of being inspired by people from the Ecclesia. Nice. No? Um, it's kind of always nice to change things up a bit and keep it different, like keeps it exciting and as the good old trusty quote from whenever goes, it's variety is the spice of life. So even with like the new songs and stuff, so that kind of keeps you interested instead of getting into the old habits that you sit in there for tens of twenties of years and such, kind of. Like I can remember from when I was like very young, like even like just like Jared Dodson, like picking me up and giving me a piggyback ride. <laughs> I remember exactly this one exact day. So yes. I th I think for me at least, what I always loved about Riverwood was its unity. No matter what the age or what, where you stood in society, you're all one under Christ. And I think that's what we should always remember. Remember that we're all one family and we're all in unity on our walk to Christ. And even in our talk today, our connection is only made stronger with Christ when we are around people that share our faith. And I think that we shouldn't let trivial issues try and divide us or... Um, divide the way we uh, interact and I think, yeah, the importance of unity, which I've learnt at Riverwood, should continue. Yeah, it's kind of the foundation of our lives essentially because most of us are here since we've been born, so it's kind of the one mathematical constant that's been in the equation for ever. It's been my pleasure to speak with you this afternoon. Thank you for your time and God bless you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.